Today we will be looking at a predator with 1 million subscribers that went under the radar. Soon we will learn how he damaged the lives of two young girls, one who was 12 and one who was 14. In 2017, a channel by the name of Zebra Corner gained immense popularity due to its video series mocking Chevrolet vehicles and advertisements. These videos would contain a fictional character named Mock, green screened and interacting with the people in the commercials. Let's take a look at one of these videos. Reminds me a little bit of like an Audi. It's a Chevy Malibu. Like a BMW Tesla combination. Cheryl, are you high right now? Because that's not a real thing. The man you saw on screen is Mock and the co-creator of this channel. His legal name is David Ronald Irwin and he was convicted in 2019 for sexual misconduct to a minor. Data on the situation is posted on the official Florida Sex Offender Registry with a short brief summary of what he did. As stated, he pleaded not guilty to molesting a 12-year-old girl in 2019 and later in 2020, he pleaded guilty to doing the same thing to another girl. His official mugshot is posted and by comparison, we can easily confirm that it is Mock. Although the channel has not uploaded in two years, neither has Mock himself or his co-partner Ali made a statement about the situation. The situation is dated, and considering the two are best friends, it's very confusing that Ali has not made a statement. Instead, he has opted to what I believe is deleting comments. People who want to discuss the situation in the comments need to use abbreviations or different conjunctions of the words to let them get past, as well as the fact of the sex offender registry link being blocked. Ali hasn't left the internet either. He continued to upload on Zebra Corner without mock when we presume he got put into jail. Also, another thing to mention, he consistently uploads on an associated channel called The Paid Vacation. The channel is directly linked under the Zebra Corner and you can view it just by searching it up on YouTube. Zero accountability or remorse for the situation, which proves that maybe Ollie knew about this all from the start. I don't want to claim anything, but this is an extremely suspicious situation. We know what happened and how the channel has responded, but where is Mock? You'd expect him to be in prison, but not exactly. The original case took place in the Circuit Court of Manatee County. Links are in the description if you are interested yourself. Page 4. General Information Lewd or last vicious molestation by a person 18 years of age or older upon a child less than 12 years of age. Basically in short meaning that he sexually assaulted a girl who was 12, him being a groomer. Page 5. Interview with the victim on this page, it will feature a summarized interview with the victim and what she said. I will begin reading the six parts of page five. I believe viewer discretion is advised. She stated that she had been killing herself for a while. She stated in sixth grade. She was worried her parents would discover the cuts and ask her why, and she would have to tell them the truth about David. She molested her by touching her inappropriately. She stated she approached David and gave him a hug. She stated the hug was really long and awkward. She stated he then started to pull her over the top of him onto the couch. She stated he put his hand in her <laughs> I guess the best summary for it is that he did something inappropriate, but I won't say it because that is graphic content. She stated he started to massage her <laughs> with his bare hand. Now this is a shocking article and I did severely limit it due to your sanity, but I have to say that the predator has survived on YouTube platform for far too long, and the appropriate move from Team YouTube would be to suspend his account. Page 15, plea of not guilty. We concede written here a plea of not guilty, demand for jury trial, and a notice of participation in discovery. As you can see here, he does not show remorse for what he did. It has been hidden from the light for multiple years, but he does not have a care in the world. We will go over that part specifically soon. Page 17, Complaint and Arrest. On this page, he has officially been charged as a felon for the statement I read out earlier, a lewd sexual act to a 12-year-old girl. The date is shown he officially got in trouble on the 8th of May 2018. The last upload on the channel that he featured in was 2020, when they made a joke about Jared Fogel from Subway, which seems very inappropriate after what we read in this case. Hey guys, remember me, Jared Fogel? Does anybody have any spare change? All I have are these Chuck E. Cheese tokens. Get the fuck away from me, weird. Page 116, designation order. The defendant plea nolo contender on the 12th of August, 2019 to attempt or location. Restating the previous point of what he did and now providing us with the date of the case. This page continues giving us the timestamp this event actually happened, which is scary. This means this happened around nine years ago and the court just found out about it because the woman spoke out. This event was before the channel was even created, which is why it still makes me believe Ali has known about this. Considering his lack of accountability or professional response, it's clear the co-founder does not care about the child that was harmed. We've learned about what he did, his channel, and the timeline of events, but what are the charges and concessions? Is he going to return to YouTube 
And most importantly, why do some big profile creators still follow him on X? Currently, both Donut Operator and Your Movie Sucks follow him on X, which indirectly means they're supporting a child creator. If you have contact or want to strike them a message, please do, because I believe more people need to be aware of him. Mock might actually return to YouTube. On a recent Instagram post, he stated the channel will return in December, which is upcoming. His charges do allow him to make internet content as a job, and with his record, I don't expect him to look for a future job anywhere else. We also have the channel known as The Other Guy, which is used by the co-creator of Zebra Corner. With a comment asking where Mock is, he clearly ignores it and makes a joke about it. Knowing that Mock plans to return and that his co-creator is ignoring the allegations, a future upload may be in the distant future. Okay, let's get to the interesting stuff. He has been charged four separate times because he failed to follow the terms in the original court case. We can see on page 255 that the case was modified because of these charges, which means he will serve an additional two years to his eight-year sentence. As far as I I know he is on house arrest, probation, and curfew alongside his vehicles, information, and data, being published on the Sex Offender Registry of Florida. He is also additionally under police custody, meaning they monitor him 24-7. The following charges are here. Failure of sex offender to report within 48 hours of change in vehicles owned. Failure of sex offender to register electronic mail addresses or internet identities. Failure of sex offender to register charges on his cell phone numbers, employment or education enrollment, and out of county warrant. And the surprising thing is that he owns three General Motors vehicles, which are the company that makes the cars he criticizes. The channel continues to slowly fall into irrelevancy, with little uploads and comments constantly mentioning the event. From what it seems, this channel will continue to decline as more people are aware of the situation. How they went from being one of the funniest and most popular channels in the car community to being irrelevant because of the case. I hope more people will learn about this case by using this video and that YouTube can take serious action against the Zebra Corner. Thank you for watching and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.